So this is part nine of the best things you didn't know Reaper could do. So the next thing I want to show you is pooled MIDI items. I have a project right here with a MIDI item. Let's see what it sounds like. Now let's say we want to duplicate this to other parts of the song. Of course, we can just loop it like this, but sometimes you want separate items. So you can mute some of them or just change some of them without the others. So we can duplicate this item instead. Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, just drag it over to here. Now these two items are completely separate. So if we change notes on the second one, let's select the melody and drag it up a bit higher. Now it sounds like this. But only for the second one. The first one still sounds like this. But sometimes you don't want them to be separate, which is where pooled MIDI comes in. Let's delete this one. And instead, let's make a pooled copy, which we could do by holding down more modifiers. On PC, it's Control Alt Shift, and on Mac, it's Command Option Shift. Hold those down. We can make a copy. And notice the difference. This button now shows up right here and in here, letting us know that these copies are pooled. In other words, if we change one, the other one will change with it, which is really useful if you want to make changes in one and have it reflect in the others. Let's say this item is for the chorus. If we copy it to chorus two, three, four, and five, we might want it to be the same. So if we edit chorus one, the others will change to be the same. So let's change one of these. Let's change the second one. Again, the same way by selecting the melody and bringing it up. And now both items changed. Undo, it looked like this, and redo, it looked like this. So they both changed together. But there are times where you want to unpool them after using them. Let's say chorus five, you want it to be different, and it's already pooled, but now you want to unpool it. Let's make one more copy, a pooled copy, like this. Notice they're all pooled, the little button. Let's say we want to change the second one, but keep the others the same. Just hit the button once, and this item is no longer pooled. This one still is, and this one still is, to each other. But now we can change this one, and it won't affect the others. Let's bring this one up. And it only affected this one, before and after. So that's pooled MIDI, allowing us to link different items together or pool them so they mirror all the same notes, no matter how we edit them. So the next thing I want to show you is automation items pooled. So our project set up here with a vocal, I want to automate or draw in some automation for volume. So I'm going to hit the V key, which shows a volume envelope and draw in some automation. Maybe something like this for each one of these notes. Let's say I'm happy with this automation. I want to copy it to other parts of the song. In this situation, this is a chorus, but I have three choruses that are exactly the same, with the same vocal in each. So I want to copy the automation from chorus one to two and three. And the best way to do that is to first create an automation item. Hold on Alt on the PC. Option on the Mac, put our cursor in the lower left right here and draw in an automation item right over here. So now we can move this very easily, just like any other items in Reaper. Now we could duplicate them by holding down Control on the PC, Command on the Mac, and put them on each one of our choruses. And notice they all have a different number volume one, two, and three, because they're all different. So in other words, if I re-automate or redraw in chorus two, 
it's not going to affect course one or three. Or if I do the same thing in one or three, as they're all completely separate. So if I redraw some automation over here or down here, it only affected this one. But if I want the same automation in all three of the courses, so if I change one, it changes all three. So they're mirrored or known as pooled. We could do that by duplicating a different way. So let's undo that. And instead, on the PC, we'll hold on Alt Control. And on the Mac, we'll hold on Option Command. Then we drag it the same way to duplicate each one of these automation items. And now notice they all have the same number, volume one. So now if I redraw automation on this one, this one, or this one, they're all going to change together. Like this, change this note, maybe the ending, maybe drag it down like this. And each one changes together. So if we automate the second chorus, it affects the first and the third, or the third, or the first. So they're basically linked or mirrored, or what's known as pooled. So that's automation items pooled. Very useful when you want to mirror or link your automation from one section to another. So the next thing I want to show you is parameter modulation using an LFO. Now the idea of parameter modulation is that we can modulate or move in time any parameter on any plugin in Reaper. Let me give you an example. I have a guitar right here. Let's see what it sounds like now. Let's say we want to modulate some of the parameters of the guitar, like volume or pan. We can go to our track effects and add a volume plugin. Let's use the volume pan smoother and touch the volume knob as the last touched parameter. Go to the menu. Notice last touched volume is chosen and then choose parameter modulation, which opens up this dialog. We can turn on the LFO and right away, that fader gets adjusted over time or modulated. Very similar to how a synth uses an LFO. We could adjust the baseline or the strength, which decides how far it moves, the speed, how fast it moves, make it a bit slower. Again, the baseline changes the area it moves in, up higher or down lower, put it up here on zero, our phase, and again, the strength decides how far it moves, really far or just a little. So by adjusting our volume, we're gonna create a tremolo effect like this. And we could put it in time with the song by choosing tempo sync. So we can make it exactly a quarter note. We can reverse the timing. We could also change the shape we're using. Right now, it's a sine wave, so it's very smooth, but we could change it to a square wave, which just makes it two positions. And 
could also adjust any other parameter we want, even on the same plugin. So we could choose panning as the last touched parameter, choose parameter modulation for this one. Again, it opens up that dialog, turn on the OFO, and we could see panning is already modulating or moving. Let's use centered for this. So it centers between left and right. We could adjust our tempo. We could adjust the strength to decide how far it pans. We could change it to square. So it'll just pan left or right. And again, we could use any plugin we want. Let's try an EQ. We use re EQ. Let's delete all the bands except for one and make it a low pass filter. Make the bandwidth more severe. Touch frequency as the last touched parameter and turn on parameter modulation for this. Just the strength, so it doesn't move as far, just the baseline, so it decides where it's gonna move. So you can create any type of effect we want just by modulating any parameter in any plugin in Reaper. So that's parameter modulation using an LFO. Now, because I have so many of these, I've divided it up into different videos. Check out part 10 next. So that's pretty much it. That's the best things you didn't know Reaper could do. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mm -hmm.